Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be checking out Deepin Linux. So let's get started. Now, Deepin Linux is a Chinese-based operating system and something we should start taking note from because I really love the design concept. Now, if you've seen previous videos on my channel about Deepin Linux, I always liked their design. I always liked the, where the start menu is and how everything works. And now they've made it a lot better on this beta version of Deepin 23. It's completely different from a couple of years ago. And I gotta say, I really do like it. Even the boot up screen is really cool. Just saying the Deepin with the eye that bounces up and down. And the login screen gives you a really cute login image that you can put up and I just put up some, looks like some emperor or something like that. But yeah, let's jump into it. What's funny is that this time is wrong. It's actually a day ahead. I'm doing this on a Friday, but it's in China time. So it's actually a, a day ahead. So far from what I've been using on this, I really do like everything that's on this screen. I like how the icons look, how it feels, uh, the mouse cursor, everything so far, I really do enjoy using it. Now, if you want to check out all the themes that they have, you can. Now they do have a welcome screen um, that when you first boot up, it will actually ask you for settings. So we could go into like fashion mode or efficiency mode, which gives you the start menu and something that you're familiar with. So you want to go into this option, you can. I do really like this fashion mode right now because they have consolidated all the icons to the bottom right and it's easy to navigate around. Running mode, they actually have like transparency and everything. So effect mode, if I was to press on this menu, you could see it's transparent and it does like a blur. While if you go into normal mode, it kind of gets rid of everything of everything that has to do with efficiency. So it makes it run a little bit faster on older computers with uh, less powerful GPUs. But I'm just going to keep it on, uh, keep the effect mode on. Now, as far as the icon theme goes, you can change this all around to different icons, different wallpapers. I'm just going to leave it on something like this uh, vintage, which is this looks just like a Mac. But yeah, so far, I'm going to leave it on Bloom and it feels very nice. Now, they did come out with a lot of their own applications for Deep in Linux, so we're going to check out some of those, as well as some of the applications that ships. And I did install a game on here just to see how it works, but obviously I know it does work. Now, to start off, let's go into settings. Actually, now let's go into uh, System Monitor. I love their System Monitor. It's so cool. It's not that I'm trying to praise everything, but we should really start taking notes from this operating system. I really like the design feature of everything. Now, if you really want to run this and you don't want to run the official Deepin Linux, Ubuntu does have a version of Deepin Linux that you can run with this desktop on there. So you can do that, but I'm just running it straight 23 beta. Now, uh, it shows you all the processes. It's using about 1.4 gigs of RAM just started up. Like you saw it start up. I didn't even run anything. So it does take a little bit more memory than it's used to. It probably take a lot less if I was to disable the effect modes and everything, but 1.4 gigs of RAM out of 16 isn't too bad. Definitely not for a low memory machines like a four gigabyte machine, but you can see all the system services, users that you put in, and then that. And even in the users, you see that little icon. It's so cool how they just implement this in everywhere. Moving on to the next thing. Now we could go into control center. This is their own control center. So it's different from what you're used to seeing. Uh, I like their system info that they have or device manager that they have where you can actually check out, it's still running on X11, but you can actually check out if you need drivers and everything for this. So we have the general settings, keyboard and languages. You could change your keyboard settings, language, American English. It picks up that I'm in New York, but obviously the time format it didn't. The update is pretty cool too because you can actually set this to automatic downloads and automatic install. Um, right now I just have everything set as default. So I didn't play around with that yet time date and it's pulling from Debian and time zone list. It thinks I'm in Beijing close enough. I'm going to switch this to New York somewhere. Let's see. Let me get, yeah, there you go. New York and my time should be set back to what it was. There you go. Region and format. I should probably get rid of this later, but region and format United States. That's good. Mouse. You could change the speed. Uh, mouse settings, acceleration, power if you're running this on laptop. And actually Deepin Linux is really good on laptops. I've ran this before and I talked about it before because they have their own library for the lid closing and all this other stuff, the detections. It's pretty good with laptops. Uh, sounds, uh, you have your standard settings. You could do sound effects and stuff. Uh, Bluetooth, notifications. The notifications are pretty good. I don't think I could see anything. Oh yeah, there you go. It slides out like here and you can edit it. So the notifications are pretty cool. 
you got your network. So I have a few network. I have, I'm running this on, um, I'm running this on a mini PC that has two NICs. So that's why you see wired network one and two. And there is VPN. I wonder if what type of connections you have for it. L2PT. Okay, PPT, uh, Open Connect, Strong Swan. I've never used this before. And VPNC, okay. So it's got a, quite a few in here already. Personalize, you could change the effects again. And default applications, they have their own browser as well. They have their own mail. Well, I don't know if they have their own mail. Uh, they have their own browsers, they have their own text, they have their own video player, uh, they have their own music player, a bunch of stuff that they have. Here you could change uh, display scaling, which is good. And then your user, you could actually change this. This is what I was talking about. Look how cool and how many pictures you could choose from. I really like this selection. Now, moving forward, we have their albums. I really like the albums. Now, I don't like the icon for the file manager because this looks like an email thing, but I, it makes sense because it's like a file thing that you could open. But I know uh, from, from a distance, this just looks like an email application. So I'm gonna head over to pictures, wallpaper, and let's just open one up. So I'm gonna open one up with image viewer. And this is their image viewer. Look, if you zoom in, it goes right towards the edge. We still don't have some apps like this in Ubuntu that does this. I really like that styling of how that works. And then you have the little application down on the bottom showing you how much you zoomed. And then I could click and move over to that spot as well and then zoom back out. And then I have other photos I could just click and choose from. Now, if I close that out, it just breaks it. But if I go over to album, it loads the same program, but I could close this out and it goes into album. All my pictures that I view from album will have it and they'll have timelines and album in here as well. So it's pretty cool. I like the album and the photo program. Uh, I also do like their video program as well. So this is their Deepin video or their media player. So I'm gonna go open movies or it's called Deepin movies. And it actually loaded from my last save spot, which is really cool. Uh, as soon as I opened it up, it's last save spot. Full screen is fine. I still ha like how it could get edge to edge. But yeah, all in all, I really do like the application a lot. Like I really like the blend with the edge to edge for this. Now moving down the list, they have a boot maker. So if you have ISO and you want to turn it into uh, image, you can use their boot maker over here. Um, they also have their browser. I don't know. I think this might be like a Firefox. When I go into their about, it says version 6.8 official build. And browser, it's copyright by Union Tech Software, but I don't, oh, it's Chromium. So it's a version of Chromium right over here that they modified into their own browser. I was actually gonna check something out. So if I go into youtube.com, everything loads right away and it's not in Chinese. Going to my channel, loads pretty quick. I got my latest video, which is the AIO. That was pretty cool. I'm actually gonna plan a lot of stuff for this. I'm trying to look into resourcing plates so I can make my own um, water cooling blocks. But yeah, if you haven't checked out this video, it's pretty cool. Videos work pretty good. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, moving down the list, we have their calculator. Uh, this is normal calculator. I don't think this, this might be like a gnome thing. I don't think it's uh, their own version. Calendar as well. I think this is their calendar, uh, like Deepin calendar. If I go into about, I should be able to see it. Yeah, it's from Deepin. Um, now, normal <clears throat> programs that come shipped with this is, um, they have LibreOffice as a default office suite, but you can ch always change that. They also have their own font manager as well. So I, haven't used font managers much in Linux, so I don't know how I would compare this to, but it does work. And that's majority of their system stuff. Now, one of the things that I couldn't find before, which I'll show you, this is their own terminal program as well. So I'm gonna pop this terminal. And if you type in Deepin and hit tab a couple of times, it shows you all the programs that they have. I do wanna show you the app store in a sec, but what I do wanna show you right now is their device uh, manager. And this device manager, it should have a program somewhere in the control center. I just couldn't find it anywhere, but 
Uh, from here, you can actually see all the stats of your computer. So you can see I'm using a four core N95, the motherboard, memory, what I'm using, the overview. But if you head over to drivers, if you have like an AMD or NVIDIA driver that needs to be installed, this is the spot where it'll detect everything. And this is their own software that comes to light where it actually just searches everything that it needs, Bluetooth driver and whatever it is, and then it'll try to install it, especially the graphic drivers. That's what it's mainly used for. But it could even pick up like this device, the serial controller. So this serial controller is funny because this is what controls the front screen of this mini PC and it picks it up. And this other USB thing, which I don't know what it is yet, and I could probably do a little research and figure out what device this is, but it picks up all the hardware. Now this is their own app store and they have a lot of apps in here. And there's a lot of Chinese apps that I'm not even used to seeing. Like QQ I'm familiar with, like that's a Chinese application. But say I head into um, games or if I go into, do I have categories? Categories. Go into games. It legitimately has Chinese games that I've never seen. Like, I wonder if this is on Ubuntu, but I don't think this is. This is Minesweeper, but it's Chinese. And it has a few other games behind it. And if I was to go into um, some other games that has Chinese words in it, it's also Chinese game that I didn't even know that these would exist. Oh, this is like a Go game. It does have a lot of top apps that you might need to download or want to download, and it puts it up into a, the front view. And it's very easy to navigate, and if you want to install anything, say if I want to install WeChat, I could just click on that. I don't need to install passwords or anything. The only thing that I didn't notice is that it doesn't have Flatpak or Snap, so it is using their repository to install all this, which we don't have in the States. Like the, A few of these apps I don't think we have in the Ubuntu repository, so it's using their own repository that I haven't seen. I wonder if I could pull it up in settings. Download settings, no, it doesn't show me the repos. But yeah, you can just install it by clicking install and there you go, we have WeChat. I'm gonna open this up and see what it is. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to now. I don't even have a WeChat account. Oh, I could install Godot over here too. So if I wanted to code some games and it is on 4.0, so yeah, it's pretty new. Now I'm gonna close this out, close all. And I could close this. Now heading down to this little thing that I like, you can go over to here and go over to your system tray over here. Why is WeChat trying to kick back on? Let me do a force quit. And if I go into say Steam, I open my Steam account, it's gonna make a little icon down here. And there you go, I have my little system tray. And I'm not gonna play a game, but I am gonna show you Gunfire Reborn, which is a game I play a lot of, it's a lot of fun. And it works right off the bat. I just install Steam and then I'm, I'm installing uh, Gunfire Reborn and it just works. Like a lot of games these days because of the Steam Deck, we're actually able to get a lot of games to natively work right off the bat on Linux. Like right now I'm running Gunfire Reborn and seems to be working pretty good. No error messages. It's running around 34 frames per second on the login screen. I'm not going to play a game. In game it actually runs a little bit better on the FPS, but it works pretty well. Now they do have something over here called the UOS AI. And this is the first time I've ever seen anything that incorporated AI into the operating system. And this allows you to actually chat with ChatGPT or something like that. I don't have an account. So say like if I was to type something right now, open browser, it'll say you have to make an account first. So if I go into account, it basically states that you need to have uh, ChatGPT like GPT-4 from OpenAI and these other brands and login account information and API keys, then it'll use it. So it's not locally hosted on this machine. It's basically just reaching out through API to ChatGPT and all that stuff to get the AI information. So that's pretty cool. Then you have your network information over here. And then you also have your notification that I showed you earlier. And then you have this where you could turn on and off Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, speaker volume, your system things, onboard keyboard, screenshot program, system monitor. They have a bunch of stuff over here. And then obviously your power button. Anyway, as much as I checked out this operating system, I do really enjoy it and I really do like it. I love the design of it. I love the fade of it. I love that you can change all the stuff. The icons are very appealing that I like and everything just seems to work. Even though it's still in beta right now, it just works very well. And I do like the fact that they included this chat AI thing onto the side. If I had an account and I want to add it, I could actually easily use that 
to ask and answer questions that I need. Anyway, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you got any questions about this, hit me down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And the same my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.